Good afternoon everybody, welcome back to the latest JC tutorial video. Today we're going to be covering a couple of the extras that come along with the Sure Good Chinook. Alright, so for all of this, obviously, you need the Chinook. Also, what you really should have is this website here. Okay, it'll be included down in the description below. This is where you can find all that information. So if you're confused about anything or just don't know how something reacts, you can't figure it out with the tutorial that I'm about to show you, you can go there, read up on it, and get a better understanding. We're going to be referring back to the actual in-helicopter equipment as well as that website bouncing back and forth so that everybody can see everything um, and see exactly where that information is found so that you can look back and review it. So, for this video today, we're going to be covering the uh, transponder and the GPS system as well as touching on the GPS coupling system with a short automated flight from here at White Star over to Hollywood, all autopilot. I won't make any input controls and we're going to see how well this helicopter can do. Alright. So the first thing we're going to cover today is going to be the transponder. Why? Because it's going to be the shorter portion of that. So if you want to watch for the SureGood GPS, there should be a link down below to quickly jump to the GPS section. For now we're going to start with the transponder. So we have two knobs and several buttons. Both of these knobs are clickable as well as all of these buttons. So for starters for your basic transponder function, you're going to use the master knob, you're going to turn it to normal. Okay. This is what it'll still look like when you first start up 00-1200. That means you are squawking VFR flight. M3 means you're in mode 3, the civilian mode, as well as acting as a mode C transponder, which is your um, altitude, as well as mode S, which is special information. And I just noticed my cursor is not visible. Let me fix that for you. There we go, now you can see my cursor. Okay, so standby means it's not working, it's warming up. Normal means it's on and running. Um, the other one that you'll use is emergency. If you switch it over to emergency, you see it goes 77-7700. And if we were to jump over to the radar page, it would show up like this, where you're in red. Um, ELT systems, it'll register that your aircraft is emitting an ELT at that time. We're going to turn that off so all of those lovely search and rescue crews don't just show up here at my airport. So as you can see here, I turned it back to normal and here it switches back over to VFR flight. Now, so the next section we're going to cover on this is located right here. So, sure, good, the Chinook page, we're going to the avionics tab, we're going to skip past the GPS system, and we're going to come down here to the transponder system. Here's where you have a list of all your modes. And this one also does not want to show my mouse. Here we go. This is where you have a list of all the modes that we're going to be talking about today. So, mode 1 is a two-digit mission code prefix. Mode 2 replies with the four digit after the prefix mode three is the civilian transponder mode a where it's giving you uh, altitude information mode four is a military code where you have the cod or the code of the day so if i want to remain hidden and i only want friendly troops to see where i am or friendly forces to see where i am they are the only ones that will see me on the sure good radar site Mode S the replies with additional aircraft information beyond be information beyond the squawk code, including the tail number, aircraft type, military and civilian use. Mode 5 is an encrypted version of the mode S used with the code of the day. And mode C used in conjunction with other modes to include altitude data. So, the first thing that we're going to talk about here is going to be the mode uh, mode 1. So we'll show you mode 1. Here's me back there. That's my aircraft sitting right there. So we come back over here. We're in mode 3. We want to go to mode 1. So we hit bit, mode 3. Now we just shut off mode 3. Bit, mode 1. We are now in mode 1 with 
the transponder mode C and mode S active. This is going to show the mission code. It's only going to show this here. So if we switch back over and look at the sure good page, you can see right here double zeros. Now we go back. We're going to go five five one two zero zero. Enter. So now we're five five twelve hundred. And it's going to take a minute. Come back over here. Boom. My aircraft showing as five five. Now. We're going to turn mode 1 off and turn mode 2 on. 5-5, five, five, one, two, zero, zero. Enter. You don't have to re-enter it. I just did, but you don't have to. Come back over here. Now it's only showing the second half of my squat code after that dash. So now, uh, what you can't see right now, is I'm changing the squat code and hitting enter it'll take just a second for the website to update and you'll see that it's going to change from 1200 to there it goes to 1300 because I just changed my squat code so if I pop back over to the sure good or to the SL there you go now you can run mode 1 and mode 2 together and when you come back over here you'll get the 55-1300 so if you had multiple aircraft that were on, quote, your mission code of 55, you could tell them apart by 55, 1300, or 1400, or what have you. Now I'm going to turn off mode S. You can't see it. I just turned it off. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But it should remove my tail number, and you should only see my squat code. Boom. Now you're only seeing my squat code of 55-1300 because mode S is off. Now I'm going to turn off mode C. Mode C is altitude transmitter so transmit my altitude information so you'll see that boom just went to zero meters because I am no longer transmitting my altitude. Alright so to operate any of the secondary functions we use the bit button so bit mode 1, bit mode 2 off bit mode S, bit mode C. Okay? So that's how we turn those off. Bit mode 3. Mode 3 is the standard civilian version of the transponder system. So it'll transmit my squat code. So if we pop back over here, boom, all you're going to see is the squat code that we have in there, which is 1300. Now we're going to show you mode 4. Mode 4 is pretty badass. So, as you can see right here, I have mode 4 turned on. Okay? That's it. Mode 4 and nothing special. So, we're going to pop over. So, we're not running our code. So, mode 4 is on. Nothing different. Okay? You see my 1300. But now, we're going to set a code of the day. Okay? So, we twist back to hold. And we're going to set a code of the day, an 8-digit code, which for today I'm just going to use 1 through 8, and hit enter, and then back to mode A. And all of a sudden we're gone. My helicopter is invisible. Okay? Now, the only way to see that is if you click on this fancy little button right here, and it's asking, please enter your IFF code, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and enter. Now it's going to look for aircraft using that 8 digit code. And there I am. There is my aircraft. The only people that could see me on the transponder were whoever puts in that 8 digit code. So you can share it with anybody, you can share it with whoever. Now, going back to the SureGood side, uh, from here you can enter any squat code that you need. So if I want to run all zeros as my squat code you can just use the transponder like normal and then the transponder code will change okay so now if we go back to here okay so here's our code well how do I get rid of that code or put a new code you can come back to hold put in your new code and hit enter or if you twist all the way to zero you can come back and you'll see it reset that squat code also Squat codes will change once you shut down a helicopter. Two, three, four, five, 
six, and seven. So there's my code. Here I'm going to be 1200, enter. And over here, 1500. Let's see if these work. Nope, that didn't work. I thought Kelly. Alright, so that's how we can set our day identifier. And if you look, I go right back over here, and my helicopter's gone again because I have a different squat code in here. 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, squat code entered. And it'll take just a minute to find an aircraft using that code of the day. There I am at 1500. Okay, now we're going to go into mode 5 bit turn mode 4 off and turn mode 5 on mode 5 is the same as running uh, mode S so it's going to give you my uh, aircraft identification number but it's also going to put it all encrypted so that I can only be seen there you go to boom there's my aircraft on that information okay and if we put mode C back on Give it a second, I just turned mode C back on. You should see my altitude go to 30 or 31. There, it goes back to 30. Okay, so now if I were to take away my identifier code, no identifier, my aircraft disappears. Okay, that is how you use the new transponder system. So you set whatever mode you want to set by hitting bit and then the number. So we're going to turn mode 3 back on and we're going to turn mode S back on and we're going to squawk VFR for a VFR flight. Okay? If you have any questions, feel free to ask us about that. Now, we're going to move over to the GPS. A little bit more complicated of a system. Excuse me, most people are used to the GPS screen. Here, what we have is real simple. We have on and off button. New. If you hit new, it's going to ask if you want to clear your whole section. So if you have like a whole waypoint system in there and you want to go new and you hit yes, boom, it'll clear out everything. Insert, so I can go to insert and I can insert SL white star. Hit enter. Distance, I am 0.1 meters or 0.1 away from white star. So now if I hit new, yes, starts a whole new flight plan. Okay. Direct 2 will take us direct to the next location on our list. Clear is very simple and enter. Now, you can use these keys down here. Okay, so if I want to go SL, white star, enter. It'll find it. Or, I can go GPS, and this is all typed in local. GPS, INS, which is insert, SL Hollywood, and hit enter it finds SLHA. You can also go, so let's do S, uh, GPS, INS, uh, INS, SLSN. So now I have three lines in here. Oh, I want to change line one. I'm sorry, line two. I want to take Hollywood out. I don't want to go to Hollywood. GPS, one, line, or L1, line, or line two, L2, INS, so we're going to insert on line 2, SL, KA. So it inserts on SL, KA, or above a Hollywood, in line 2, it puts that, and then it pushes everything else down. So if we wanted to add a waypoint in between Hollywood and... SNO, like there's, um, oh, what's that waypoint down there? Oh, I gotta look. Snugs or Agent, okay? I can go GPS, INS, oops, GPS, line four, because this is where I want it to be. After Hollywood, I want line four. So line four, insert A E G E N finds waypoint AEGEN tells me how far from Hollywood it is and then if you look I can actually still scroll down and there's SL SNO okay so you can have all kinds of waypoints in here 
Okay, so we're going to clear this list out. Ah, so it would be hit one, and then clear, clear, clear. If you type the wrong button, it's the backspace. Or hit new, and then yes. So all of these work. So for what we're going to do now, I'm going to do a flight plan on the GPS screen for here. We're going to do a flight plan from here. And then we're going to input the same flight plan into my GPS, and then we're going to let the helicopter automatically fly it. Okay? So, my first destination is going to be here. So we're going to plan here. And then let's come all the way down. Let's see, can I go to Lanyard, or will it take me? Yeah, see, it cuts the corner here, and it takes me out, so I don't want to go there. So we're going to plan this waypoint, and then I'm going to move, so there, boom. Now we're not going through one, I can't enter that sim, I'm banned from there. But we're not going to also enter this dead area here. So now we're all the way down here at Layard. Alright, I want SNL. I want to come into SNL. I'm sorry, Hollywood, wow. I want to come into Hollywood. Oops, we need to move Hollywood down. Boom, Hollywood's down. Now. We're a helicopter. Let's take H1. Well, can we shoot an approach into H1 safely? Let's check the chart. This is the approach chart system that we are developing to work with this. Alright, so this is for the approach plate 436 left. Let's see if H1 It looks pretty good. It's got a 3 sim final, 6 degree approach angle starts out at 76 meters. I've never done this approach. I've never flown this approach. So we're going to take that. We're going to take H1. So since Hollywood was my last hunt, I'm going to select H1 and it's going to approve the H1 flight plan. So now we're going to fly the helicopter one flight plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop back over here. We're going to pop up our waypoint system down here in the bottom and we're gonna go ahead and enter all of our waypoints I know it's hard to see do, 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 do. let's see if I can move this over a little bit let's move this whole thing over there we go we don't need to see the route of flight we need to see this information right here so from my current location GPS INS PLE DR boom GPS, INS, A R E Z O. GPS, INS, L Y A R D. Alright, now this is how you enter a flight plan or a specific approach. GPS, S or INS, S L H A. Okay, Hollywood is my last destination. Okay, so right now it would do exactly what's shown. It would do if I didn't have H1. If we entered direct, this is what it would fly. But we want to come in via H1. So we're going to come back over here. We're going to go GPS INS H1. Because that is the approach to be flown. So now it should fly the H1 approach into Hollywood. Okay, everything here looks good. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn on, oops, yeah, barometer altimeter. Okay, uh, autopilot, ALT. Okay, we're going to clear above. We're going to lock in our GPS. This is our GPS button. When we lock in that GPS, we are syncing to this because we're going to have the GPS information. All of these are going to be engaged. We're going to go GPS, or, or, sorry, AP, so autopilot, ALT, an altitude of 100 meters. Or 100. That's a feet. So we want 500 feet. Boom. Clear above. The helicopter is going to start raising its own collective. As you can see, it's doing it right here. We're going to start raising collective. Oh, shoot. Sorry. AP. Let's just disengage autopilot. Disengage and lower collective all the way down. Sorry. Because I was trying to cut out the... Uh, 
the jumping of the collective and everything. I turn physical off. Ah, I need my HUD. I turn physical off so that the helicopter could sit here without moving. And it wouldn't be an issue. So let me throw my HUD on here. Get my collective full down before we try that again. See, it's all the way up. Okay, collective full down. So now, we're gonna go here. Now the aircraft can be physical again. Okay, so now we're gonna put back on the altimeter. Oops, not radio altimeter. We want the barometric altimeter. Radio altimeter is from above, it's looking for the closest object below us. We don't want that. We want the pyramid altimeter. Okay, so now let's try that again. AP, ALT, 500 feet. Clear above. Helicopter is going to slowly start raising its collective. It's got its heading locked in. Once we're obstacles clear, AP, indicated airspeed, IAS. And we're going to do this at 100 knots. So, clear forward for 100. That might have been way too much clear forward. Oh, there we go. ELT, and we're up, up, and away. Okay. So, for the rest of this video, I'm not going to make any flight controls. We're going to let the helicopter do all of the flying. Because, what's the point of having GPS if we don't let the helicopter fly? I'm sorry, what's the point of having autopilot if we don't let the helicopter fly? What I will do is show you right here that we are, in fact, going to be following the waypoints that we put in here. So we're coming up on the first waypoint. You can see my altimeter over here ah, if I can close this stuff without stuff other stuff popping up close my turn all right so we're gonna hit coming up on that first waypoint and it's gonna execute its turn to the right so because that's where the next waypoint is so it's gonna execute its turn you can see we're maintaining about a hundred knots and about 500 feet AGL or MSL in this point AGL and MSL are pretty much the same when we fly in SL. Alright, so you can see the helicopter is coming back on to the course here. It's trying to get back to that pink line. Or if you're looking in SL right here, it's going to try to align that CDI back up center. And as you can see from my NOR board, I have yet to make any flight controls. I have done nothing except tell it an altitude at which we're going to fly and an airspeed at which we're going to fly. I've also heard sim crossings are pretty rough today. So I haven't. This is the first time I've tried to fly. We'll see what happens, guys. gonna do a little wobbly wobbly that's to be expected with autopilot trying to keep up that course as you can see we're coming up onto our next waypoint here yep, no you can't because we are slightly out of screen there we go Let's see if we can make this thing a little bit smaller There we go. A little better. Alright, as you can see, now we're coming up on our next waypoint. CDI is a little bit deflected right, but that's why it's trying to find that. And now we're about to pass over. Three, two, one. Boom. Switched over to the next one. And you can see our airplane is, or helicopter, is pretty much sticking to that pink line okay 
The most deflection will be on large turns, like 90 degree turns. Okay, the next waypoint is going to be a 90 degree turn. Zoom out a little bit here and you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, zoom out a little bit, boom, well, not full 90, but the last two are going to be pretty sharp turns lining us in. Now, so we need to get some information. We need a little bit more information going over to our approach plate here. Uh, find our approach plate for you. So we need to know altitude. So our coming over to our final approach fix, our initial approach fix right here, we need to be at 183 feet, okay, which comes out to about 76 meters. And we're going to slow down to about 60 knots when we get close. So we need to have that information in the back of our heads that once we hit lanyard, okay, our second last fix, our last fix before our initial approach fix, we're going to begin our descent so that we can be at 183 feet by the time we get to our approach fix. So once we pass this location, we're going to begin a descent down until we get down to here for 186 Feet. All right, make this small again. But as you can see, our helicopter is still right on its course, just putting along here, like it's got no care in the world. Because yeah, why not? Who says we need to fly? For those people that want to have autopilot. The option is now available for you. Come back in here, SL, and look around a little bit. So we're going to go over to Domus Island. I'll warn you now when we fly over Domus. Actually, no, we're not going to cut Domus. We're going to cut the corner of it, but we're not going to actually go in it. Because we don't need to. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so you can use any flight plan. You can make your own flight plans or use pre-existing flight plans simply by going to the SureGood radar page and finding the existing. We have a lot of saved routes. Some of the big public routes are saved for you guys. As well as you can go, you just watch me make my own flight plan. You can do the exact same thing. A little bit of wobbling, that's to be expected. You're going to have to deal with it. Yep. It's SL. We can only have so many things that we can do and this helicopter pretty much does everything and more of what any other aircraft in SL has been able to do. So this bad boy is from takeoff to finish. It's going to fly the approach all on its lonesome. Hopefully I haven't flown into Hollywood in a while. I've never flown on the H1 approach. So fingers crossed ladies and gentlemen that the H1 approach actually goes to a helipad. <laughs> How bad would that be if I demonstrate this beautiful new system and the H1 approach does not go anywhere near a helipad. Gosh, I wonder what my view distance is set to. I should really check that. There's me flying. Oh man, we left our door open. Craziness. Close that door. Oops. Clicked it on a flight. On a cross. Clicked it on across and it disappeared. Boom. Door's closed. Alright, what's my view distance set to? 500? Okay. That'll work. Alright, so we're going to set up in here. We're going to make sure we have our landing lights on. Both landing lights on. Anti-collisions on. Position lights are on. Cool. We got our position lights on. Our landing lights on. Go ahead and open the back door because why not? Put it to emergency and ramp down. Oops, getting to the bottom of our. Alright, so we're getting ready to come up on this turn. So I'm going to preset my command, APIAT, oops, indicate it, nope, ALT, 183, which is the altitude we need to be. So I'm presetting my command, so once we hit that and begin our turn, which looks like we might be beginning our turn early. 
Okay, it's gonna find the course. Six, five, four, three, two, one. It's got the course. We're beginning that turn. We're beginning our descent. And indicated airspeed 60 knots. We're gonna begin slowing down for 60 knots because we want to turn final at 60. So we're gonna have to slow down now. It's not gonna be much. It's not gonna take long for this massive behemoth to slow down. As you can see, our course is off to the left just a little bit right here. Here's our course. That white line indicates where our course is, but we're on a fairly good corrective angle to come in, and we're descending and slowing down, so we've got some extra time to get back lined up. As you can see us on the uh, GPS page here, it's lining up. It's set to intercept here. I'm hoping at 60 knots we'll be able to turn and keep on that H1 approach. Excuse me, keep on that H1 approach. Fairly simple. Look at my approach plate one last time. Seven, six meters. Three sims out on a six degree approach is what we're going to be expecting to fly here. Whew. A little nervous letting the autopilot fly. I'm not used to not flying my own helicopters. But uh, it is what it is. So you can see we're about to intercept our course. We're on a 60 knot. Uh, pitch attitude and as you can see we've re-intercepted that pink line move this over here so that we have the last leg in view okay take just a minute for our helicopter to come into view of the radar screen and as you can see I've still made no control inputs three autopilots are on heading altitude, it's heading airspeed and altitude all being held. We have 0.36 left until we get to our initial approach fix. What is my final approach fix on this approach? Final approach fix, which you can't see right now, is going to be 356 meters from Hollywood so we're coming in low and slow here we go we're coming up on the last turn point three two one and get ready for some shaking there's that turn luckily it got that turn in there right before the sim crossing for DH1, it looks like we're doing a fairly steep turn. We might have to slow down just a little bit to get a line back on course, coming back around. So it's going to be shooting for something over there. I don't know exactly what my approach fix is. I think it's that helipad on the roof right there. If this thing's going to land on that roof, that's going to be freaking awesome. Uh, one last check of my approach plate. The outer marker beacon. It looks like we're going for the roof, boys and girls. God, I hope these numbers are accurate. Okay, I expect that middle or inner beacon soon. We're going for the roof. Can't quite tell if we're going to land on the roof or not. Looks like we're going for the roof. Looks a little low. I'm a little nervous about this. Still maintaining. Maybe I. Uh, oh, it's supposed to come into an auto hover by itself. I want to see it do it. It's coming in a little hot. <laughs> we might go right past that thing at 60 knots. That was our inner beacon. Oh, right past it, and we're going to clip the tower. I'm come really close to clipping the tower. Okay, so it had put us into an auto hover. If I would have slowed down the speed just a little bit, <laughs> we would have we would have landed right on in there. That's why my controls weren't working. 
Options. No, where is it? Back. Dang it. Boss, why do you always put this thing where I don't want it? I can never remember how to change it. Options. Guards, controls. So, close. We got pretty close to our spot, enough to make us in. But watch this. Let's do. Let's do one more approach. So it won't kill us to do one more approach. We've got the feel for it. So that gives you guys a basic demonstration of everything here. For those of you that want to stay and keep watching, watch this. QPSINS. Let's just go. That's a Hollywood. I don't know if this will work. S I N S R W three six left. Uh, initial altitude to intercept on the three six left is three eight three. A P A L T three eight three. Oops, I'm from top. A P L T three eight three. A P I L Oops. indicated airspeed 100. Let's see if it'll actually fly the approach. Yeah. And GPS on. And get extra sim crossing here. That's when we'll fly from third person. So, on this screen, all I've done is this. We're now going to go out, flip around, and intercept the approach into 3 6 left. That's all I did. That's all I added. We were at Hollywood, and all I added was. That's a big ass blimp, man. All I added was Hollywood, 3 6 left, go. <laughs> I gave it the altitude to intercept 3 6 left, and I gave it 100 knots. So now it's going to fly out to its initial approach fix by itself. Intercept initial approach fix and then pull a hard U-turn and hopefully get back on the approach. Okay, AP indicated airspeed 60 because we're approaching our initial approach fix. And now we're getting reverse sensing here. It's freaking out because I'm getting the uh, middle marker beacon and we're like way out here still. So we're crossing over the middle marker beacon while we still haven't even started the approach yet. Okay, so it's going to hit the beacon. We're going to do a steep turn inbound, hopefully. It has no idea what it's doing right now. It's like, wait, what's going on? So it just snapped over, just passed over the initial approach fix. So we're going to swing around hard and get line back up on our final. See, we're way off course. Let's see how she does. Hollywood traffic helicopter, one, three, one, three. Who am I? Look up to 1313 Mike. We are VOR inbound for GPS. Runway 36 right. Boom, right before my final approach fix. Alright, so we just passed over the final approach fix. That's why the outer beacon is going off. Next beacon we'll hear is the inner beacon. 
Which, I forget exactly where the inner beacon goes off on this approach. It might go off at our missed approach point, and then the inner beacon goes off at the threshold. We look pretty good. This is a... what is this? It's a 10 degree approach angle. That's why we're getting red indications, because those are set up for, I believe, like a 5 degree approach angle. Helicopters land on an average of a 10 degree approach angle. So we are coming in nicely. CDI has a minuscule amount of deflection. We'll come in nice and smooth. It'll initiate auto hover when we hit. So our missed approach point would be before we leave China at 65 feet. Okay, we're passing 100 feet right now. We're about to go to our missed approach. You hear the middle beacon going off. Missed approach, we have runway in sight. We'll commit to landing. Middle beacon, we're over the threshold. Auto hover will activate. We'll come into a hover. At which time, I have all flight controls. I have all flight controls. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give you a good demonstration of both the transponder as well as the new GPS system. Look at that. I just set it down on the runway and I'm still number 56. So, if you guys have any questions, like always, you can always contact me or any other member of the SureGood staff. We live to serve. We're always here to help as needed. And I wish you all the best in your flights and have a lovely day, guys.